This is the Bold of the Most podcast, where we talk with those making bold moves in business, real estate, and life. I'm your host, Trey Jacobs. Thank you for being here. Let's jump right in. Welcome back to the Bold of the Most podcast. I'm your host, Trey Jacobs, and today we have my friend ZZ. ZZ Song, what's That's good? That's me. How are you? I'm definitely going to, I want to make Trey Dog a thing. I'm not going to lie. Oh gosh, it's not going <laughs> to, please do not try to make Trey Dog a thing, okay? I mean, I guess you could. It, it, it could be worse, right? Okay. Can we also your- take a minute to appreciate why I'm on the currently on the podcast, you guys? This is called a pity podcast because here's the story <laughs> behind it, Okay. I was originally start, supposed to start a podcast with someone else that didn't go through totally f- fine. Like whatever, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. And then after that, I was like, Trey, it didn't work out. And Trey was like, Hey, you know what? Do you want to come be on my podcast? And I was just like, is this a pity podcast right now? So you guys, that's exactly why I'm uh, here because Trey feels bad for me. And here I am. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. I am definitely going to name this the pity podcast because <laughs> That is so perfect. And no, it's not a pity podcast. Gosh, you have a lot of great things to say, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. And well, when you I know, first found out, I don't know if you remember, but when I first found out that you had a podcast, I was like, Trey, I want to be on your podcast. And you were like, great, awesome. What's your superpower? And I hate it when people ask that because I feel like when people ask that, they're like, what is the one thing about you? that would impress me. It's basically saying like, hey, impress me. Like, tell me what you got so I can make you cool or cooler. (laughs) And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a normal person with cool personality, okay? Like, what else can I, like, do you want me to juggle to impress you? What else should I do to impress you on the show? Listen, listen. So the reason I asked that question is because my favorite podcasts are the ones where somebody teaches me how to do something. So, if you know, I asked like what maybe I'll rephrase that question because ZZ um, doesn't like it. But it's essentially what can you teach the audience, right? Because the people who typically listen to this, they want to learn. And, you know. I want to, I want to learn too. Shit. You know, what's really interesting about having a podcast is that you can ask the the multimillionaire billionaire, right? Like, Hey, can I take you out to coffee or dinner? Right. I just want to ask you some questions and nine times out of 10, they're going to say no. Yeah. But if you say, Hey, want to come on my podcast? It's just so much easier to have that same conversation. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is film it in front of everybody. Yeah. Um, So and then there's people like ZZ. Who? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> who get the pity? Who get the pity yeah. ones? <laughs> so oh, here gosh. we are, you guys. I'm gonna make this, or I will try to make this really good for you, so it won't look like a pity podcast. Okay. <laughs> well, when you start your podcast, one, what is it gonna be called, and two, what is it gonna be about? I don't know. I mean, at this point, I'm more focusing on building my brand right now mm-hmm. and my company, and really providing that service that I think. Um, my investors really need. And so for me, like my investors come first. And so let me figure out like what I can bring them to them and really offer them that next level of service. And then once I have that established, then I can start thinking about like how else I can provide to the general public, right? In terms of a podcast format. And so yeah. that is kind of second priority to me right now. Yeah. What is your brand? Tell me about uh, Vitality your Funds. Yes. So Vitality Funds, we I specialize in um, specifically helping healthcare workers invest passively in real estate by buying multifamily. And so with that, you know, a lot of healthcare workers work long hours. Like I'm a nurse myself. I used to work 12 hour shifts. I used to work weekends. I work holidays. I work nights. I work. I did all of that. And it's, it's freaking exhausting, you know, as I'm yeah. sure anyone in healthcare will tell you, it's exhausting. And so when you're on your days off, it's like you don't have the energy or the mental mental capacity to then go off and learn a whole new skill about like, let's say, real estate investing. And so for me, it's like once I started thinking about like, oh, I want to re- invest in real estate, I only was able to do that when I like lowered the number of 
hours I was working on a weekly basis. If I was still working 40, 50 hours a week, there's no way I would be able to do that, right? And so I feel like, you know, a lot of healthcare professionals kind of miss out on that because they don't have the time to be able to do that. And so for me, I want to provide them the educational tools, the resources, the like investor community so that they have the right tools to make that informed decision in terms of like where they want to put their money and grow their passive income, right? Yeah, you got a lot of passion about that. So I do. How is uh, your logo creation coming along? <laughs> that is a great question. It is definitely a work in progress. I mean, when you kind of start out on as a new person, entrepreneur, you are a one woman show doing all of it, right? You're doing marketing, you're doing sales, you're doing like brand creation, um, like accounting, which has not been very fun. Um, either. And so all that gets meshed up into one and you really have to think about how to best allocate your time. So I do, you know, what a lot of people do called like time blocking. You block out specific times or days of your week related to specific tasks only. Like on Mondays, I'll only work on um, like business operational aspect of it. On Tuesday, I'll only work on, you know, um, investor outreach or investor relationships on you know, the next day I'll do like, let's say, um, like networking within the community, getting to know more people in the commercial multifamily industry as well. And then that has really helped me kind of feel a little bit less overwhelmed in terms of like what I'm doing, kind of feeling like I'm still getting things done at the same time. Yeah. That's what's up, man. The time blocking. Yeah. Do you have one of those? What is it? The, uh, Pomodoro? (laughs) Pomodoro? No, I'm not that fancy. Do you use that? I, well, as a designer, like my day job, I'm a UX designer and I used to, cause it's super helpful, but as of late, my projects have been super light. So it doesn't really work unless mm. you have like more in depth. I do. I, I need to implement that on my day to day for this business, right? Like man, mm-hmm. the, having the podcast and everything else that comes with being uh, uh, an active investor, it it's overwhelming sometimes, especially when you're just starting out and have no idea what the hell you're doing, uh, to but say are the so least. Eager, or, eager to learn. <laughs> yeah. No, you really do, especially for you. Like you have a lot going on. Like you're doing podcasts, you're working on your business, you're doing your day job, you have a family, you're buying a new house. Like it's a lot. So for yeah. you, like figure out like specific days that you want to do podcast only not even just your own maybe like get out and join other people's podcasts too you know and just kind of time block things out and i think that'll be really more effective and efficient for you too just trying to figure out (laughs) be intentional with your time like when we're so busy it's hard to like your mind is running at 100 miles per hour and so it's like you were just really trying to figure out all these different things that you're trying to do and so like for me, I found that I have to be really intentional with my time because yeah. my time is so limited doing all these different things. And if I'm not intentional, then I don't get a whole lot done, you know? Right. I do that too, right? Like I have a mountain of tasks and I don't write them down because I don't know why, but I, I, <laughs> have, have, started, to. I have started writing yeah. them down, but usually Good. before it was manageable, right? Like, all right, I yeah. know I need to do X, Y, and Z. Well, over the last few weeks, I swear that, you know, hill of tasks has turned into a freaking mountain yeah and now i have to like plan my day intentionally and it's Mm -hmm. it's not it's not perfect i'm a work in progress shoot Mm -mm. i still i need to figure out how to make time to go to the gym right yeah boy's big big (laughs) big body you know thick mad seas and i need to get to the gym but i haven't figured (sighs) out how to do all the stuff i need to do in a day and you know my kids got home 20 minutes ago i spent like Mm -hmm. 10 minutes with them so i could come up here and do this pity podcast you know (laughs) (laughs) gotta gotta block that out i gotta plan that better next time hey guys my company page capital group is actively sourcing and buying multifamily deals If you're looking to put your money to work, gain some tax efficiencies, and grow your portfolio while we do all the heavy lifting, go to pagecapitalgroup.com backslash invest. That's page, P-A-I-G-E, capitalgroup.com backslash invest, and someone from our team will reach out. Now, back to the show. (laughs) Exactly. There you go. Dang, bro. It's definitely hard. (laughs) Speaking of kids, how many kids do you have? 
I have two. I have a six year old and a three year old, and nice. um, they're I love them to death. But you know, it's a lot of work. You have young kids yourself. Like I love spending time with them. It, at the same time, it's like. I love spending time with them, but then sometimes I'm also like, I cannot wait to get away from them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, unless you have kids, you're not going to fully understand that, right? No. Like, how, how can you love somebody so much, but still like can't wait to get away from them? Yes. And when I say yes. get away, it's just like, I need, I need a time block, right? Yeah. I need, a, <laughs> I just need a little bit of personal space without you screaming at me because I just turned off the lights. That's it what is I so mean. much worse for you. Moms get it. Yeah. So much my, worse. Yeah. I don't know what it is. My daughter, she's three, right? So she's fierce. Like, I love her to death. I love this personality, this independence that she has. And I'm yeah. trying to empower her every day to be a strong girl, which is great. But when she gets older, like, I want that energy to continue. And I think when she becomes adult, she's either going to be a CEO of some great company or I kid you not, I think she's going to be a gang leader. Like that's how crazy uh, and wild she is. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think she has what it takes to do all of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's going to be in the mob. Yeah. <laughs> like a like, like gang leader. She could that's do hilarious. it. Like, and, I, and I love that for her. And like, I completely am in support of that. But it's just like, when it's directed at me every day, yeah, <laughs> like nonstop, it gets a little tiring. <laughs> so does she? So if you're not watching this, all right, Zizi's in a room, and on the wall of this room <laughs> is a sticker, and <laughs> it is a giraffe. It's my giraffe <laughs> in a wooded area. Um, <laughs> is he, what is that? Your office? Is that your decor? Is that how you get down? Um, so this is my daughter's bedroom, which she no longer uses because she went through a sleep period where she was just not having it. And so she now sleeps in the bed with my husband and I. So we moved her bed out of this room. Um, so now I've kind of taken over and this is now my um, my office. And then you can't see it, but like right by the giraffe is elephants because she loves animals. <laughs> like she loves giraffes and elephants. And then these stickers that also like right in front of me are lions, which I kind of love that energy because sometimes I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, I need to channel that like fierce lion energy and just oh, like yeah. go for it, you know, which I kind of love. It kind of gives me like a low key motivation. So how old is your daughter? She's three? Three. Yeah. And she sleeps in your bed every night. Yeah. Oh. No, but here's the kicker. Okay. Oh. So here's the thing. Our bedroom, we're fortunate enough where our bedroom is like big enough. So we have a California king and then we put a queen size bed next to us. And then my son also sleeps with us too. So it's the four of us on like two giant beds. Okay. You have a California king <laughs> yeah. next to a queen. So you yes. have 15 feet of bed. <laughs> we have a and then we just all, yeah. I mean, one of them. Yes. The other one, because the other one was originally the kids, like one of my son's bed. And so we didn't have any like headboard with it. It was just like a box frame and like mattress situation. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just like a giant slumber party every night, basically. Every night? Oh my gosh, that would drive me absolutely <sighs> crazy. Oh my, you are so much it's better a, than me. It's, okay, here's the thing. Like my husband doesn't get any of it. Like he sleeps on one side and he's like, like the kids are like whatever about him which is t unfortunately typically the case because they always want me so like he has a giant amount of space and i'm just over here like next to him like with these two kids like sprawled out all over me basically i just can't get over the bed okay so do you have like a 20 foot comforter to put over these things no like <laughs> no 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 like no, no, no. <laughs> i need to see this and no i should actually I should, i'll send you a video however like Here's the thing, like some nights, yes, it does suck, especially like if one of us sick will like move out and like have sleep in separate rooms. But like they're I love my kids. Like, don't get me wrong, when I even when I say that, sometimes I want a little space. I think space is healthy, right? Like if you yeah, have this codependence on your kids, like that's not healthy. Like you need to have your own established identity, and then your kids need to have their own established identity, right? However, they're only young ones. Like my son is already six. He's going to be seven, like two months. 
like I'm not ready for him to get so big. Like I feel like he's already tall enough or I'm like barely able to pick him up now. Like I can still do it, but he's getting so big. And I just, I really cherish these moments that we have together because I know it's not going to last forever. Right. Like in you a few years, yeah. <laughs> in a few kid, years, it'll be done. Be 18 and I'm, sleeping in your bed, <laughs> 18. There's going to be four adults sleeping in two <laughs> no. beds. Like, <laughs> I hope you're pre- prepared for that because <laughs> I, I see it. I Stop it. No, uh, I already know my son's going to move out in a couple of years. I can already I can already sense it now. But like I'm cherishing this while I can because like especially before the hate the hit the teenage years where they're probably going to hate me and they're just like, I don't want to talk to you. Like I'm going to have cherish these moments as much as I can, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to let you cherish them, but I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to yeah, like it's, yeah ooh. it's i mean not everyone's like that right like everyone's different and you, if you had told me that like when my son was born that i was gonna be doing this i would be like you are insane like there's no way i would ever do that and you know and there you six are. years later here i am like totally yeah. not expecting to do this whatsoever and yeah and in like two years he's gonna have to leave because my son is eight and this kid is starting to stink <laughs> Oh, like, is he? Oh my gosh, he's. We're just now starting to like put on deodorant, but he's no, a kid. At he eight? has to. He stinks so bad; it's terrible. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what? What? Yeah, yeah. No so, way. Okay, then. Good to know. Sports. He plays sports, right? right? So you right. know, once he's out there running around for a bit, you can. Uh, poor kid. Poor kid. It's poor teachers because this is like a transitional time for mm-hmm. all these boys. And, you know, you try to put on the deodorant and he's just like, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude. I love that. You need That's this. hilarious. Oh my gosh. Can I also say that it's like your master bedroom must be massive. If you can fit two beds next to each other in there, holy hell. No, it's not that big. It's honestly like we have that. And then after that, we're able to fit in like a little like a bit. A, I mean, a little bit more than a standard size bedside table. And that's basically it. So I feel like it's average size. It's not like anything that's like super giant and like a mansion or anything like that, you know. Yeah. However, you... we just made it fit. We made it work and just I mean, it's only yeah. temporary. That's how we look at it. Right. It's only temporary. And then soon, like it'll be done and I, then i forgot to mention that our dog also sleeps in the room thankfully not on the bed he's on his own bed at the foot of the bed so it's a crowded room oh my gosh. there's a lot of there's a lot of heat going on in that room yeah it's crazy man oh my gosh and you're in seattle right <laughs> i'm in seattle yeah like seattle suburbs proper? of seattle no suburbs of seattle what part what part of seattle um i live on the east side it's a little area called sammamish so it's very like very very suburban very like sammamish yeah you know i was born up there right i know was it arlington yeah. uh no i was born in anacortes oh anacortes that's right yeah we that's lived crazy. in federal way in tacoma and we always went to the Puyallup Fair. I still yes, can hear those commercials. I take my kids. You should come yeah. up sometime so we can take our kids. I still take my kids. It's great, honestly. Yeah, my my uncle has a like a lake house, Lake Chelan. That oh, love it. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular. You should come. It's very beautiful during the summer, and it's very popular. Like that's like where all the locals go to vacation on, like yeah. for like a little getaway on the weekends, basically. Nice. Yeah, yeah. we'll get up there soon. Um, I mean, we're on a budget right now with this new house that's fair uh, like we gotta it's like i've never we've never built a house before so we have to put down the three percent earnest money and then when we go to the design center we have to put down a 10 percent deposit on that right so oh. basically in like the first you know however long it takes us to get the design down we gotta put like mm-hmm. twenty-five thousand dollars down which is fine right but um you know with that we're, we're gonna be very aware of our spending yes. for the next couple of months um it's a yeah. lot it is welcome to america right dude the housing prices right now are insane yeah and i can't believe i i completely i was like i'm never gonna live in a suburb and then we buy in like a suburb <sighs> so far north we're basically in freaking oklahoma right it's it's is that where it is kind of no, closer but... is it that far north 
if you like north of Texas, north of Dallas is Oklahoma. So we're like, like here's oh. Dallas. And then you drive yeah. for like 45 minutes and then you get there. And that's with no yeah. traffic. <laughs> like we're out in the bonies. But really? Listen, but it'll be time. quiet. You'll have like a nice space. You'll have a good backyard and hopefully like a good neighborhood, right? That's what you're looking for. Yeah, this is like a it's not like a first time home buyer. It's like a step up community, you know, mm. for mm -hmm. when people have their second houses and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to be, you know, maybe, shit, maybe we'll meet some investors out there. You um, should. Yeah, that'd be great I mean, for you. Yeah, man, your neighborhood is probably full of investors. Real quick, guys, if you're enjoying the show and want to help us grow, share, shoot us a five star rating and follow the show on Apple or Spotify. My goal is to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger guests on the show to reach more like-minded real estate investors and help everyone be more bold and build more wealth. Now, back to the show. No, here's the thing. My neighborhood was really cheap. My neighborhood is full of old people, like old retired people, because back then when they bought this place, like bought their homes, like this area was dirt cheap, like super yeah. cheap. If you were to come in and buy it now, it's very expensive. How but expensive? back then, like... Mm, I mean, like for like what a two to three thousand square feet home, um, like not like super old and not super like, um, like shaggy or anything like that. I would say it's probably like upper like one point six seven eight nine, like Damn. one point six to two million dollars. You know, Damn. I know it's a lot. Damn, it's a lot. Damn. It's it's a lot, but not for like Seattle, right? Like you no. y'all make a lot in Seattle. Yeah. So it's true. It's very different. So. There's a lot of tech money in Seattle, right? I mean, my husband works in tech himself, so it's like I can't really say yeah. anything otherwise. But what's, I mean what's his it's name a again? great Eric. Eric. Yeah. What does he do? He he's a software engineer. Okay. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Eric. Yeah. <laughs> there you oh go. man. He can he can help build your website, right? Yeah, well, I don't know. I'll have to. I don't know. We'll 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 talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going um, to Fun Launch, by the way? I want to, but probably not. I don't have a ticket. Are you? Oh, you should reach out to Ashney. She might be able to get you a ticket. Like, how? Why would she be able to get me a ticket? Because she was at a Multify event the other day, and she met someone there who was like, "I have four free tickets to give away." So, like, my schedule doesn't work out, so you should try it. Ask her. Reach out to Ashton and see if she has anything. When When is it? It's, I think, seven, 18, 19, and 20 of this month. But I can't go because next, <laughs> next week I'm going to Ohio with Ashton. We're going to go check out our markets. Um, One of my markets is Ohio, so we're going to go check out my, my market, go visit some, like, you know, properties, um, and then visit with some brokers, establish some better relationships just to get to the mark get to know the market yeah. a little bit better. And then right after that, it's a fun launch. So she's actually thinking about going straight from Ohio to Orlando for fun launch. But I can't do that because right after fun launch is um squat up. And so mm. I'm like, I need a few days in between to come home to my kids, say hi, cuddle them, you know, spend some time with them and then go to squat up. Yeah. You yeah. travel a lot. You've been traveling a lot lately. I have, I mean, which I is so not me. It's really not me. I've unintentionally been traveling every month this year, basically. Yeah. It's insane. And what I don't. Was your favorite I don't trip? My favorite trip. Um, that is a great question. I would probably have to say, I mean, Arizona probably for Race Fest was really good just because, you know, how. A lot of my cool friends there, like Trey Dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, You're forcing it. You're forcing it. Come on. <laughs> and then from there, also met a lot of really cool people too. And I love Arizona because that's where like a lot of people, a lot of my friends are like Kevin Cho and like Pace Morby is there. Like I love, I always love seeing him. And so it's just, and the weather was just absolutely beautiful. It's, it's not so 120 perfect. degrees, which is right. really nice. And so I think for that, it was it was great. It was a really great experience. You left peak early, though. I did leave peak early because I wanted to come. Okay, these conferences, let me tell you, they're three days long always, which is exhausting. Usually by the end of day two, I'm like, okay, I've 
I'm like, I'm done. I'm ready to go home. And it's like, yeah, you, and actually, you know, what's funny. I actually met someone like an experienced operator at race fest who gave me that idea. He's like, cause I t- texted him the, on the third day and I was like, Hey, I'm looking for you. Where did you go? And he's like, I went home. I never stay more than two days at these events because I typically can get what I can, what I want to get out of it by like into those two days. And I was like, Oh, that's actually a really great idea. And so that's what I did. I'm like, I'd rather come home because I'm traveling so much this year. I'm like, I'd rather come home, spend the time with my kids and then like, you know, really work hard on those two days that I'm actually there networking, like getting, like getting the education that I need and then come home to my kids and be there for my kids. Cause they're young. Like I'm chair, I'm trying to be there for them and have build these memories together before they're like, okay, mom, I'm done with you. You know? Yeah, no, I hear that. I respect it. I, will say though i think the best speakers were on day three <laughs> you did say that yes dude you i because i <laughs> i bought my ticket for jamie kern lima 100 yes. hands down right that's why yeah. i was there i wanted to see her speak again and since i'm cool tyler he brought me backstage and i got to meet yeah. her so yeah. that was just freaking dope man that's I mean, pretty cool I was so happy. And Goggins was cool too, right? I mean, I've never really consumed his content, but shoot. Yeah. He, he had people. <laughs> He's he a had beast, people, man. Dude, he had people like going out of their freaking mind. I've never oh, seen really? people like fanning out as hard as they did at a freaking real estate conference. No and, way. Yeah, people were like running to the stage and all this shit. I'm oh just like, God. dude. No way. Who, who is this guy? <laughs> It was just such I'm a weird sh- energy. It was just such a weird energy. What does that what does that even mean? I'm not him, right? Like he is what he is, right? But right. Like the people who got so pumped, like Tyler t- challenged him to a push-up contest. Not challenged oh. him. But he was like, all right, I'm just gonna do push-ups. And then Goggins got up, it's like, I'm gonna do push-ups too. And then everybody around me were doing push-ups. And that's when I knew I need to get back to the gym. <laughs> You, I was gonna say you should have been up there on the stage with them, Trey. Bro, I would have done like two push-ups and then just fell, right? Just do a plank <laughs> on the ground. No, uh, I completely agree. I completely agree. Like for me, I I'm like pretty good about working out on a daily basis and um like staying active and everything. And it like I, because I've been traveling so much and life has been so busy for the past like like three four months like i it has really just fallen off on my list of priorities and it doesn't help that like i've been sick for the past week so i've been feeling really crummy you know however like now i'm like trying and then a part of me was also like my husband and i slightly slightly thinking about having a third and i'm like should i (laughs) i'm like should i (laughs) Should I just let my body go because I'm going to get fat soon anyway? Or like, should I just really try to get back into the grind and like eat really healthy and like exercise almost every day again? So I think ultimately, because I'm not, I'm more leaning towards, I'm like not quite ready for a third right now, even though my daughter's three. I'm just, just thinking about being pregnant and the whole postpartum and just all the lack of sleep and this you know just sleep deprivation in general i'm like oh, yeah, i don't I mean, know you're like you're like almost almost out of it right like three yeah. is i mean i'm yeah. gonna tell you what to do but i'll tell you this we were <laughs> one and done i know and... you i thought i was gonna be one and done yeah because we were... let me tell you my son he did not sleep when he was a newborn like I did not get any sleep when he was a newborn. And so when I had my daughter, she slept so well because I think part of it is also I was a first time mom. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And so I think with that, like that kind of probably affected how much my, how much sleep my son was getting. And so with my daughter then, like, because we knew a little bit better, um, she's like, and just naturally she was a really good sleeper when the midwife was like, how much, you know, especially in the very newborn stage, right? She was like, oh, how much like sleep are you getting on a 24 hour basis? I'm like, oh, I'm getting like six hours collectively, not like six hours at a chunk, you know, in a total six hours. It's like broken them into like an hour here, two hours there, et cetera. And um, she was like, oh, you know, I would like to see you get a little bit more. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Six hours is great. I feel so freaking alive right now. 
Isn't that like how, I don't remember who it was, Albert Einstein, didn't he have like a weird sleep schedule like that? Like he'd sleep three hours and then three hours and then like two hours and stuff like that. So, I mean. Didn't know that. I don't, I don't, I, maybe it's not him, but somebody like super smart did that. So maybe that is a benefit. Who knows? <laughs> maybe there all, is. But... All I know is my kid, he goes to bed at like seven and he wakes up at five every day. Yeah, that sounds every about Every right. day. I know. Every day. I know. And then you get like, I remember my sister at the time, she didn't have any kids of her own. She was just like, because my son would do that too. My son would wake up super early. No matter what time they you put them to sleep, you could put them to sleep at six, seven, eight, nine. They would still wake up at like five, five thirty, right? In the morning. And my sister at the time was like, like, why don't you just try having him go to bed a little later and see if he would wake up a little later i'm like that's not no. how it works like because no, then they wake up tired and then yeah. they're little and they get shits super cranky day. yes yeah. exactly <laughs> like, they get super yeah. cranky it's we tried it's not we tried we tried because mm-hmm. we're like because he's slowly like three months ago he'd be in bed by 6 15 and now wow. like, yeah yeah like 6 15 and sometimes he'll wake up like yeah. he he's a he's big he's a big big boy right so he's he so would, cute he's yeah, so cute dude is he's a monster <laughs> but he he would um he'd wake up once to eat because he just yeah. couldn't make it through the night right and then now he's making it through the night but he's also going mm-hmm. to bed about seven but still waking mm-hmm. up at five so we're getting yeah we're getting close right yeah right? i don't know if you can hear him right now but he's downstairs no, I can't. crying i can't hear him <laughs> So they're they're probably trying to get him ready for bed right now. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So no like, number three for you guys then, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure of that soon. <laughs> See, yeah. that's funny because that's what exactly what my husband and I said after the second one. <laughs> I kid you not. There's the no first way. words out of my mouth after I give birth to my daughter because both kids i gave birth naturally no epidural or anything because that's just what i wanted oh i know it was quite painful but i did it and okay side note sidebar one of my best friends she's like a complete boss woman like cfo of a hedge fund company um she's super cool like i just like super awesome and she's like there's not a lot of people in this world that i would not mess with but like you are definitely like someone i would not mess with did i did i say that correctly uh well two thoughts one i agree and two man does she do podcasts shoot you should you should have her actually i don't know if she can there's a lot of things she can't say because of her work so i don't know but it would be kind of cool anyway so going back to that she should be your first podcast guest (laughs) You're absolutely right. She should. Yeah. 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 Y'all, y'all can just shoot the shit. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know. Exactly. But my first words, going back to what I was saying, my first words out of my mouth after I had my daughter, I was like, no more fucking kids. <laughs> That's what I said. And now look at you. And here we are. And like, and now- even after the second one, we were like, okay, Eric, let's get you a vasectomy after that okay and then just for some reason i yeah just for some reason we just haven't done it and for me i think it's because it feels so final like not that i want to have a third right now but it's just like after he does it i just know that that's not an option anymore you know it just makes it you can undo it but it's not guaranteed though that's the thing and it's like why would i do that to him why don't we just be a responsible adult wait for a few years and then really know for sure that we don't want to have any kids and then have them do it, right? I mean, honestly, you guys have a built-in vasectomy and it's called two kids <laughs> sleeping in your bed at night. I know. So you're safe. I know. <laughs> you're safe. It's true. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, that's, like, um, uh, I mean, that's another podcast, but that's... <laughs> like, um. All right. Well, ZZ, I want to wrap this up. But going back to the, to the network thing, I think that what you yeah. said that was really interesting, right? You talk to an experienced operator and they do right. two days and they're out. So how mm-hmm. do you maximize your time at networking events and only 66% of the time? So, I mean, you really have to think about what it is that you're 
go into it, you, what your goals are. Like going to these events, like you know what the events are going to be, like what the topic is, right? What it's geared towards, whether it's raising capital, whether it's geared towards um, multifamily specific. And then off of that, you know ahead of time who are the guest speakers going to be. Like if you know that pe- there are people that you really want to hear them speak, then you know you want to be there for that. And then just like finding time anytime you get and just going up to people and introducing yourself and just networking, whether it's like before the event start, right? During breaks or like for me, there's, I can't sit still for a long period of time because I just, I, that's why I don't work in an office setting. And that's why I don't work in like um, a normal office job just because I can't sit still. So even for me, like sitting at a conference for like, let's say four hours listening to people speak, I just... I just can't, don't handle it very well. So for me, I always have to get up and walk and stretch for a little bit, get a little bit, a little bit of like outside fresh air. And so, you know, during those periods, I'll get up, I'll like go outside, meet people, get a little bit of a break from, you know, the indoor like conference scene. And then once I'm ready, I'll go back in and like listen to a few more speakers and then kind of come back out. And a huge chunk of it also, like they give you lots of time to network as well. And then you also have to think about like lunch times, right? After mm-hmm. like these events typically also end around like five or six, they always have like um, like networking opportunities for you afterwards, whether it's like dinners they're hosting or some sort of like event cocktail hour that they're hosting. And so you always are able to have like these additional times just to get to know other people and really network. And that's what honestly most of these conferences are about. It's, it's rarely about the education or like hearing about the guest speakers. It's mo- like the most value that you will get out of any of these conferences are the people that you meet. And like you hear everyone say who are successful in any kind of capacity that like, you know, it's not like how they got there. It's like who helped them get to that stage. And that's what networking is, right? Trying to figure out your who, who can help you t- and take you to the next level or who, or who you can help and take them to the next level, Right. And then yeah. it has to be like a both give and give relationship. It can't just be like a one way, like you're always giving it to me and I'm not giving anything back to you, right? You always, any kind of relationship first, whether it's friendship or professional relationship, always, always, always give something of value to them first. And that way they know that like you care about that relationship and you like you want to put in the time and the energy to foster that foster that relationship and really get it to the next level. And I think that's for me, part of the reason why I'm so good at relationship building is that like, I, I'm very like detail oriented and I actually really care about the people that I speak with. Right. And so I'm really good at, you know, like talking to someone, knowing what it is that they're, they like, and kind of like going out of my way to make them feel special so that way they also have a positive, you know, feelings towards me as well. Right. Yeah. Who, who is your, who, who do you need right now to get to the next level? Oh, that is a great question. Well, right now I need my designers to help me finish up my freaking <laughs> logo. That's who I need. <laughs> your designers that you spent like $15,000 on. Okay, it's not fifteen thousand dollars. Let's oh, calm down. Bad. People will my go bad. crazy. No, no, no. no. definitely no. nowhere near that expensive. That's my who right now. My designers need to finish my logo, and then everything is gonna fall into place, and then That's go right. from there. Yeah. Right up. Yes. Well, ZZ ZZ songs and Zen song. Where can the people find you? Yes. So I am currently um, on Instagram and Facebook as well. So my Instagram handle, which I use a lot more, just FYI, is uh, ZZ underscore song 23. And then um, I, you know, healthcare people don't use a whole lot of LinkedIn, but I'm finding that I I do need to make a LinkedIn profile. So I recently started that as well, like literally as, as of two days ago. So nice. I need to start like building out my LinkedIn profile and kind of build a presence around there as well. Right. LinkedIn, Zen, Zen, Z, H, E, N. Oh, no, just Z- LinkedIn is just ZZ song. ZZ song. And then Facebook yeah. is Zen, Zen. This is the Zen, yeah. Zen. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll drop those links in the description. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Any any last words? Any last words? Like, <laughs> how do you want to wrap this up? What are your final well, words? I want to say thank you guys for coming to my pity podcast. Hopefully <laughs> that was enjoyable for you guys. Hopefully you... Uh, 
under you got something useful out of it and hopefully that was some relatable content for you and it was just like a good time for you to listen to <laughs> yeah hey Zizi, just so you can practice i want you to do the outro i'm gonna put you on a spot ready go oh my gosh okay well thank you guys so much for coming to trey's podcast he is definitely going to i don't know kill it in this podcast game and also just multifamily real estate um hit that like and subscribe button <laughs> If you like what you're hearing more, so you can follow him on his journey moving forward. Great job. Thank you. Is that good? I don't know. Is that good? That's good. I love it. And (laughs) cut.